what's up everyone welcome to ncx tech and today in this video i'll show you how to dual boot linux mint debian edition along with windows 11 on your computer this method is 100 percent safe and there is no risk of losing any of your data and also we're not going to have any dual boot issues linux mint debian edition is a rock solid free and open source operating system based on debian and which is getting more popular these days it works out of the box with full multimedia support and it is extremely easy to use. And for this installation, you'll need a USB pen drive of minimum 4GB capacity and a free disk space of around 50GB for the Linux Mint installation. And the machine must have a UEFI support. Okay, let's get started. First, I'm going to download Linux Mint Debian Edition ISO. So for this, open web browser and then go to linuxmint.com. So then in the download option, there you can see Linux Mint 20.3 and other versions LMD5. So I'm going to try LMD5. So LMD stands for Linux Mint Debian Edition. So this means this version of Linux Mint is based on Debian as an alternative to Ubuntu. So now click on download. So ISO size is of 1.9 GB. So for the download, you can choose the mirror. Choose the nearest mirror. And after LMD ISO is downloaded, next I'm going to download Rufus to make a bootable USB. And this works both for legacy BIOS and UEFI. Just click on download. So here I have the two files, Linux Mint ISO and Rufus. So to make a bootable USB, first you need to insert a USB device. So I've inserted a USB pen drive and then run Rufus. So from there, First, you have to choose the USB device, so which is the only 8GB USB drive available. And then the ISO file, this Linux Mint LMD ISO. And then leave everything as it is. And then click on start. So this will delete all the data on the USB drive and writes LMD ISO in it. After making a bootable USB, now it's time to create some free space on the disk for the Linux Mint installation. So for this, go to disk management and there you can see I have two drives there. The first one is the SSD and the next is the Toshiba one terabyte hard disk. So I'm going to install Linux Mint on my second drive, that is 1TB hard drive. So to create free space, either we can delete some volume or we can simply shrink down some partitions. So here in my case, I'm going to delete this partition and I'm going to get around 73 GB of free space. So as I told you, minimum of 50 GB is required for the Linux Mint installation. So after creating the free space on my hard drive, I'm going to restart my computer and I'm going to boot my computer from the USB drive. And as the computer restarts, I pressed F12 to enter into boot option menu. And from boot option menu, I have to select 
USB hard drive to boot my computer from the USB and then we start Linux Mint so now there we have Linux Mint desktop screen so to install Linux Mint there we have an installer file install Linux Mint on the desktop just click on it and then choose the language time zone and then keyboard layout and now you can give your computer name and you can set the password leave everything as it is and then next so for the installation type I'm going to select manual partitioning method next so you need to be very careful here so first we have to edit partitions so this will load Z parted first you have to choose the disk so here in my case I'm going to install Linux Mint in the hard drive that's why I have to select hard drive and then use the unallocated space so first I'm going to create a, a partition of 500 MB as a boot EFI partition file system is FAT32 then add and then Again, I'm going to create another partition of around 4 GB as a swap partition. So, file system, Linux swap. Add. And then from the remaining space, I'm going to create another partition. I'm going to use all the available space and file system is a ext4 and then one thing that you need to manage flag for the boot EFI partition as a boot flag so after creating these three partitions click on apply all changes apply so this way we have created three different partitions as a boot partition Linux swap partition and a root partition so now close this and again back to installer and refresh this so now you'll be able to see those three partitions so from this 500 MB partition I'm going to assign it as a boot EFI partition so this is the swap partition we need to do nothing here and for the next partition I'm going to assign it as a root partition So that's all we need to do. Next, and install Grub Boot Menu on the hard drive, which is my STB. So this is the hard drive. The next, install. So now this will install Linux Mint on my computer and this may take up to 5 minutes so installation is done so now 
I have to start my computer. And it is asking me to remove the pen drive and then press enter. So as my computer restarts, so I got this grub boot menu. So from there I can boot into LMDE or Windows 11. So first I'm going to boot LMDE. I need to enter my password. So here's the Linux Mint on my computer. And again, let me check if I can boot into Windows 11 or not. So for this, let me restart again. So from the boot menu, I'm going to select Windows 11. And it is going to load Windows 10. And it seems everything working perfectly. And if you are not able to get into LMDE boot menu, so if so, then go to BIOS setting and from boot option, you can set Debian as a first priority for boot. So guys, I hope you find this video useful and if so, please don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on notification bell for more Linux tutorial videos. Thanks for watching. Have a nice time.